But seraphs hear not insults, only choirs of angels in song. So has he been like huffing the gas or something? <laughs> <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> he, he he was getting high off the gas. All right, all right, everyone. Let's uh, let's go take a reset. Right, everyone, back it up. Let them fight. Objection. Oh God, I just remember I'm definitely afraid of bees. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it might have been opened up by Mrs. Shamspear? Possibly. It seems the people at Aldemar Gas must have missed it. Ow. <laughs> I, that's that's my question too, mysterious voice. We found well, it in thirty seconds. How did they miss this? <laughs> Hello, everybody. KVTV on the sun, and welcome back to another episode of The Gray's Turning Number Two. We have discovered there's a hole in the coin box that is somehow missed. I mean, they claim it's a small hole, but uh, it looks pretty noticeable, in my opinion, at least in the in the graphic. <laughs> I, th I think the issue is that when we compare that hole with the other hole that you have to put the coins into, is that the, this this hole doesn't look it's like it's big enough for coins coin, to come right? up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still kind of suspicious. <laughs> hole? What? You're right. You're quite right. There is a little hole there. The meters aren't supposed to have that. None of the others do. In other words, we can assume that Mr. Shamspear secretly opened up this hole himself. Yes, I wouldn't at all be surprised. But why? Yeah, why? I mean, it's tiny. You couldn't get a farting, uh, farting through that. Farting through that. A farthing. I don't. A farthing. You couldn't get a fart through that. What she either. said. But yes, you farts. couldn't get a fart through that. <laughs> toot toot. <laughs> Lady Altamont. I wonder if you could give the court some more details about your meter design. Also, can is she in uh is she in here? I wanna s She is! What's the pull it? Queen Bee Altamont. Wait, wait, go back. Which what who? To what? Go back to the to the other to the other Jesus Christ, Sham Spear. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were being mad at Mr. Garrett. I'm like, what are you? He's, he's just, he's just here, no, man. no, no, not that. It's uh, Shamspear over here. Just oh, God, I'm looking man. fabulous. <laughs> I like that Gregson, for whatever reason, in his profile shot is like, oh, I guess I got to take my hot off for this. Take a nice <laughs> photo, would you? What sort of details? I don't know the kind of details we can figure out where there's a hole at the bottom <laughs> of it. Why, why are you being picky? Well, what I specifically like to know is... Uh, uh what's, a, what's the question here? <laughs> why would... Okay. Well, it wasn't... I don't know I'm curious about the coins one, gotta be real with you. But, uh... I mean... I'm not I, Phoenix! I'm, I'm curious about that one, too. Yeah, but I, that'd be cheating because I kind of already know where to go, so I'm not saying anything. <laughs> okay, we can do the coins though. <laughs> yeah, it's I like, was yeah, I know well. I'm Brianoski, but at the same time, I already played through this game way too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I say what would the answer be? <laughs> Unless we're really stuck. <laughs> How does the meter tell the difference between different coins? What do you mean? Well, for example, if someone were to put in a one penny coin, that wouldn't work presumably, would it? No, uh, of course not. Uh, so, well, how does the meter know that the coin it's been fed is a thrumpany pit? Uh, a thrumpany pit? Thrumpany? We already found the pit, it's at the bottom of the thing. The fed is a thrumpany bit. A thrumpany. English is a beautiful language. Thrumpany bit. Thrumpany bit. What? That's really hard to say. <laughs> British English is something else, okay? English English is something else. <sighs> a I quarter. How does it know it's a quarter? <laughs> um, I hate to break it to you. They weren't using quarters. Yeah. 
Not That's as, an no, American it's like currency. It's okay. No, it's we're dubbing over it. Like it's a Saturday morning cartoon. We're dubbing over it. <laughs> okay, so if it's a quarter, does that mean it dispenses jawbreakers? Wait, what? I mean, unless, unless jawbreakers are made of gas, but you know, like... <laughs> Come on, don't be unrealistic, KV. <laughs> you gotta go for a jelly donut right now. Mmm, <laughs> donuts. Ah, I see. Oh, yes. No, no, continue. Yes. Continue, continue. Oh, 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 very well, very well. I see what you're getting at now. The meter tells coins apart by their shape and size, which includes their thickness. A threepenny bit is about three quarters of an inch in diameter, you see. Other coins just won't fit. Oh, I see. It's clearly been very well thought out. The witness will amend their formal testimony with that information in case it is pertinent. Okay, As so that you tells wish, me it's my lord. Okay. Well. So... It doesn't identify the coin by, like, you know, reading, like, you know, like, scanning the coin or anything. It goes by shape and thickness. A meter is designed for coins that... For coins? Oh, the meter, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> the meter is designed for coins the exact diameter and the thickness of a threepenny bit. Nothing else will fit. So... What she's saying is, it has to just be shaped like a thrumpany. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't so, have to be a coin, per se. So you put rocks in there? Well, what have we been seeing at his uh, particular establishment? Soap. Let's look at this thing. Remember this thing down here? Oh. oh my oh, god. Oh, that explains a lot. Actually, something's missing now. It used to be red here. <laughs> oh, look at this bar of soap. There's a circular depression on this side, about two centimeters across. Wait, how How did the evidence get tampered with when we haven't moved from here? <laughs> how indeed. <laughs> oh, three quarters of an inch. <gasps> Don't think. No, that hole was there from the start. It's we, just that the dialogue is different. We did find this soap at the scene, didn't we? Yes. And we saw the yes. hole. We I, just had I, no context. Yeah, we did. Sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were actually, like, saying that, and I forgot you were actually reading the dialogue <laughs> that was on there. Yeah. Th <laughs> because I'm stupid. I'm stupid. It's, I'm it's, stupid. It's okay. Hello. It's... I'm Phoenix Wright, and I'm stupid. Well, you're in the wrong time period. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Just runs in the I'll family, show you the door. apparently. <laughs> would you... Would... I'm stupid. Oh, would you look at that? It's the door. I'm gone. <laughs> You know, he looks an awful light, lot like you, Mr. Narahodo. Uh, it's a shame. But how is that possible? Because aren't... Well, never mind. His hair seems a little spikier, though. Yeah, uh, you... <laughs> Bye, KV. <KB. laughs> you just need hair gel. <laughs> What's hair yes, gel? Yes, yes. There, there were two bars on the ledge just outside the window. So we took this one. But I'm sure when we first found it, there was some sort of reddish medallion in the middle of there. I remember it clearly. Take that, Lewis. <laughs> Has Lewis not returned from the door? <laughs> I'm too busy sobbing over the, how stupid I am. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yes, but there's no sign of it now. Where could it have gone? Uh, you can just read the second oh. half. <laughs> Imperfect cell here. Bar of soap. There's a two centimeter diameter circular depression in the middle of one surface. Okay then. Now we have to figure out what happened to that red medallion wherever it was, so... There you go. Let me just confirm something here. If the diameter and thickness were to be correct... 
The meter would accept any object as if it were a thrumpany bit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Well, by something of a coincidence, while we were investigating in Mr. Shamspear's room, we found a particular item that matches the dimensions perfectly. Something the same size as a thrumpany bit? What was it? The item in question is this. What? Have you been inhaling gas like that one guy? That's <laughs> a bar of soap. Well, I mean, there's a hole in your thing, so maybe. <laughs> it certainly looks nothing like a thrumpany bit, I must say. <sighs> it looks like I'm going to have to point out exactly what I mean here. <laughs> Man, it's almost like you're playing the game. <laughs> What's so important about the soap? Uh... What's so important about the soap is this part here. Boop. Got it. Wow, guys, you couldn't flip over the soap. I had to do it for you. <laughs> guys, please. <laughs> please. You have to turn over the soap to see what I mean. Okay, bye, KB. We're gonna blame Discord. <laughs> He's been stunned into silence. Uh, Are you referring to that round depression in the middle of the soap there? That's right. A depression that's approximately three quarters of an inch in diameter. Or in other words, almost exactly the same size as a thrumpany bit. Get away! Hey, okay. <laughs> Does anyone hit... Uh, oh god, I got the voices. You're good. <laughs> Does anyone here present, I mean, present have in their possession a thorough penny bit? Quickly now, hand over your coins, ladies and gentlemen. This is a bugging. <laughs> it sounds rather like a highway robbery, doesn't it? <laughs> Judges, like, give me That's a thorough penny bit. This is a mugging. Season. Thanks to a kind member of the public in the gallery, I have here a thorough penny bit. Thank you, dogs. Your your contribution was appreciated. <laughs> now to see if it fits. My word! It couldn't be more snug. Yes, as I suspected. This, without a doubt, is a vital clue to explain how the Ultimate Gas Company is being defrauded. Well, I don't believe it. <laughs> So, your assertion amounts to what? That some inferior bar of soap has a tentative connection to the theft of gas. Yes! The depression in the soap was clearly made by a thrumpany bit. I must concur at least that pushing a coin with some force into a poor quality bar of soap such as this is a remarkably simple way of replicating the coin's shape. And then you could use, well, some melted wax or something to pour into the mold. You can make fake coins in no time. Rubble, 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 rubble. Mm -hmm. oh. This brings all the pieces of the puzzle together. It's the method Mr. Shamspear has been using to steal the gas. That's the missing link. And now okay, but how did he get, like, killed? But not killed. Well, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> and now if I follow the chain of thought, it's going to bring me to a new explanation for what happened that nobody's considered yet. But this is all nonsense. If the man had been making fake coins, my worker here would have found them when he emptied the meter. Quite true, Lady Altamont. In the absence of some black magic that can make them disappear, Oh, like a hole at the bottom? <laughs> yes. I see. That's what we're dealing with, is it? There's one form of black magic that could cause the fake coins to disappear into thin air, yes? Exactly. And the meter here gives it away. What on earth? There are remnants of the magical method used visible on the gas meter taken from the victim's room. If that is your assertion, Council, the defense will identify these remnants for the court at once. 
I, I just gotta hit the hole again, don't I? God. Where on the meter can the remnants of the method used to make the fake coins disappear be seen? Guys. Uh, guys. Wow, that's a sentence. Okay. Guys. Come on. Wait, why am I examining this? Okay. Alright, there's a little hole in the bottom of the meter here, isn't there? I should have hit the other button. And the list is, though, was made by somebody who didn't really have the right tools. It does actually go all the way through the inside. Though it's hard to see unless you look closely. Like everyone else who's trying to examine this. <laughs> in fact, it goes right into the parts of the meter where the money ends up. Huh. I suppose it's not... What? Rinosuke! Rinosuke! <laughs> <laughs> oh? Aren't we trying to figure this out, though? You couldn't exactly extract a coin through such a small hole, could you? Oh my god, Ryanosuke, I'm gonna... you're a dumbass. <laughs> Council, this is why we have to baby everything. <laughs> I'm not eating that. I'm not as stupid as he is. Uh huh. But then the question remains why would somebody go to the effort of making a hole here? Okay, well, I meant to hit R, I guess. We found this bar of soap at the scene of the crime just outside the victim's window. Outside? Yes, outside, where you yourself, Mr. Meter Man, were loitering in the freezing winter air. That's where we found this soap. Yeah, I get it. That's right, the answer, of course, is ice. Did you say ice? Mr. Shamspear has been leaving soaps like this outside his window each evening, filled with water. After a night outside in the bitter cold, the water is completely frozen solid the next morning. Then he takes his fake coins of ice and feeds them into the gas meter, giving him light and warmth and spades. As his room becomes very comfortably warm, the ice now inside the, meter coin the meter's coin box melts. Turning back into water and draining harmlessly away through the small hole made in the underside of the meter. That is how, without leaving any evidence of his wrongdoing, this man has been stealing ultimate gas. <laughs> Their faces. Just like that. So simply. It's. Is he trying to make us look like idiots? I mean, it's working. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> He's been fooling us with some bars of soap and some water. That's right, madam. I don't believe it. It can't be true. Do you have any idea how much money we spent to develop that new meter? And now you... you dust it's just that a bit of soap and some water can render it totally useless. I'm fairly sure I didn't design it. Evidence? We just showed it. Sorry? I want evidence. If you're going to stand there and tell me our meters are rubbish, I want to see proof. She's very good at enforcing accountability, isn't she? Hang on, wasn't she the one complaining that she has no evidence on his on Shamspear's wrongdoing, but she knows he did wrong? Yes. And now... I think she's just mad at how simple it is. <laughs> what I mean, get good? Do. What do you want? <laughs> Very well, Lady Automat. If you'd like evidence, I'll provide it. What? Miss Narahoto, uh, are you saying... You do actually have evidence to support this theory? I did notice a trace of something that bothered me a little at the time. And I have a feeling that this theory we've come up with now could explain it. The piece of evidence that substantiates the theory about how Mr. Shamspear has been stealing gas is... Uh... Probably the picture. Funny enough, Lewis was the one who. I, it was either Lewis or Kimmy who pointed it out initially when we were looking at the picture like a while ago. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. yeah. There's just a puddle. Okay, alright. 
Yeah, I don't know which one of you did it, but you guys mentioned it a while back when we were looking at the picture. And I was like, I can't say anything. <laughs> I thought he just used the bathroom. Take that! KV! <laughs> This is a photograph of the scene at the point when the victim was discovered, taken by Inspector Gregson. And it clearly shows the remnants of the crime carried out by Mr. Shamspear. What remnants? Okay, you're an idiot too. Everyone is an idiot. <laughs> Here you can see the gas meter on the wall in Mr. Shamspear's room. Now look closely at the floorboards directly underneath the meter. What? What is that? Some kind of grubby stain? Almost certainly, it's a water stain resulting from the liquid that drained out of the hole made in the meter. Ha! Huh. If one coin gives around two hours of gas usage and the occupant was healing his... Heating? Healing? <laughs> heating his room in all his waking hours. He's gotta heal that room too. <laughs> yeah, that room needs help. We can imagine he would have used around 10 of his fake coins each day. Dang, that's a lot of coins. Holy shit. The melting ice inside the meter's coin box would have been dripping out almost constantly. Leaving a stain on the floor. This. This is awful. And there's further evidence, too. Mr. Shamspear is slumped over his table, apparently having consumed strychnine. Oh yeah, we did find soap on the table! Yeah, I was like, why did he eat it? And right there next to him is a bar of soap, broken in half. You're right! The dogs agree. You mm -hmm. appear to me then, Council. But the man was eating the soap, was he? Oh, God, oh my God! Not this. you too. Pardon me for disagreeing with your lordship, but certainly not. He didn't beat it at the bush there, did he? In truth, Mr. Shamspear was found with a fork in his hand. A meal of soap is sounding in the increasing the. Do you mean to say he was using that fork to? Yes. To extract a frozen coin from the bar of soap. Ah! Uh, but the bar broke in half. So perhaps it didn't go very well? Good gracious. Rubble, 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 rubble. <laughs> and there goes the wine bottle. Hey, that's two now! <laughs> My leg! <laughs> L Lord Van Zeeks! Oh, I thought I was screaming too. <laughs> I was throwing my hand up in despair. And happened to catch my hallowed bottle on the way. Pray forgive my maladroit mistake. <laughs> what is the meaning of this council? Allow me to pose my learned friend a question. What exactly did you establish with your most recent cross-examination? Um, well... That Mr. William Shamspear is a liar and a thief. In other words, his testimony is undeniable. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. Very well. Let us assume the man is a liar. Now allow me to pose another question. What possible difference does that make? Well... Uh... We know that suicide can be discounted. Scotland Yard's investigation revealed no sign of another vessel that contained poison. And on the night in question, there were no visitors to the room except the accused. The young gasman's testimony, which we have no reason to doubt, has confirmed that. Furthermore, the only possible way the poison could have entered the victim's body is via the tea. The court has seen no evidence whatsoever that suggests otherwise. 
Even if William Shakespeare is the liar you claim him to be, and I'm not saying he isn't, these facts have been objectively established. There's no escaping it. Nah. Joke's on you, we can still escape. We can escape from the city. What? <laughs> I like how Discord just cut him right Let's there. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, there we go. D um, Discord helped KV escape for a second. <laughs> he sure did. We can escape from the city. Bye. <laughs> Therefore, in light of these facts, the prosecution calls for immediate adjudication. You, you... What? Rubble, 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 rubble. I think you understand. Just for us to go back to the exact same thing. Order, order. Well, Council, how does the defense respond? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh my god, he's finally killed himself. <laughs> well, I suppose someone was going to. Mr. Nanahodo, you still have like three more cases. <laughs> what was the point of that last cross examination? Did it actually get us anywhere? Or did it make no difference at all? Like Lord Van Zeeks is saying. Uh, I would like to raise an objection. I guess we're just gonna bluff our way through? <laughs> no, this isn't over. The defense will not rest. What? But, Council, you've successfully explained everything. You've identified and substantiated the unscrupulous method employed by Mr. Shamspear to consume gas. What more is there to discuss? Lord Van Zeech just highlighted three facts in order to make his point. But contrary to what he would have the court believe, not all of them have been objectively established at all. What are you trying to say, my Nipponese friend? At least one of those so-called facts is an assumption made due to a lack of evidence. The drinking tea one? Because, you know, they couldn't examine that? I'm assuming? I don't know he's holding the side of his head like he's the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> no, he, he, he was just like, oh man, he caught me. Time to do my JoJo pose. <laughs> <laughs> but the situation has changed now following the cross-examination of the latest witnesses to take the stand. Don't be absurd. What is this nonsense? Yes, when you bring everything we've learned so far together and consider it as a whole, it's clear. There's a question that we now need to reconsider. Namely... Did he pour tea into the... into the embedding on the soap? Oh my god, what a moron. Dude! <laughs> we might have- we might have actual tea if we check the other soap! Let's go! Okay, I was gonna say, I was like, it's tea, isn't it? We've all been led to believe that the strychnine poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear was in the tea brought to him by Mr. Natsumi. But that's conjecture at best. Objection. The victim has testified that nothing else passed his lips that night. There is no other possibility. And since there was no trace of the tea left at the scene, it couldn't be tested for traces of the poison. Objection. Wanna bet? As I said, the situation has changed. Because in fact, some of Mr. Natsumi's tea was left at the scene. And a particular piece of evidence proves Objection. it. Can't believe Bar Soap is saving her ass. Ludicrous claim. Scotland Yard detectives investigated the scene exhaustively. <laughs> Not good enough, apparently. What evidence are you suggesting they missed? The defense has made a bold claim indeed. Very well, counsel. Present your proof. What evidence from the scene of the crime can tell us about the nature of the defendant's tea? Once again, the soap. Take that! Good gracious. The soap again? The same bar the victim used to fashion his coins of ice? Yes, that's right, my lord. It's just come back to me. Something about when we first found this bar of soap at the scene yesterday. It's... it's more bars of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on a ledge outside the window? 
I'm quite certain that when we originally stumbled upon the bars of soap, there was actually a frozen coin in each bar. So you discovered the gas thieves coin factory. Fascinating. In a way, yes, but there's more. The coins we found in the soap at the time weren't normal ice. There, there was something strange about them, you mean? Exactly. Something very obviously strange. They were red. The ice was red? No. You mean... That's right. It's obvious to me now. The fake coins in the soap were made from frozen tea. What? What? I would remind the court of a statement made by Mr. Natsumi earlier in this trial. <clears throat> that evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shakespeare's room as a gift. A public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I brought water water especially to make it. And this is the result. Never will I touch tea again. Never. Ah, uh, yes, I believe there had been a snowfall that day. It was particularly cold. Sadly, on such occasions, the poorly constructed water mains in the east end are prone, are prone to freezing. So on the night in question, Mr. Shamsphere, having no running water to use, was forced to use the tea brought by Mr. Natsume in order to make his fake coins. My word! Rubble, rubble, rubble. <laughs> There were two bars of soap on the window ledge when my judicial assistant and I investigated the scene. That's right! And we only found one of them! Which means that even as we speak, some of the defendant's tea is still present at the scene of the crime. Frozen solid in a bar of soap, outside Mr. Shamspear's window. Extraordinary! Earlier today, Inspector Gregson informed the court that if even one drop of the tea remained, Scotland Yard would be able to analyze it for poison. As such, we are now in a position to prove or disprove what has, until now, been mere conjecture. By finding out for sure whether or not Mr. Natsumi's tea actually contains strychnine at all. Ugh. You... smug Nipponies. Damn, alright. <laughs> Like, I'm just doing my job, sir. <laughs> you're bringing out the racist. You're bringing out the racist. Something fierce right now. I think you're already racist to begin with, Mr. Lord Van Zee. Oh, it's about to get worse. Oh, God. My Lord, we cannot do the defendant the injustice of passing judgment now. The police should be dispatched to recover the remaining bar of soap from the scene at once. And the defense requests a thorough analysis of the frozen tea embedded in it to determine whether or not it contains any poison. Okay, but, like, wouldn't it might contain poison because it's been mixed with the soap now? Uh... No, because it's still by the window. Okay. Okay. Bailiff! Bailiff! Instruct the police to attend the scene at once. Yes, my lord. Understood. If it's still by the window, it's still frozen, isn't it? Yeah. Also, oh, wait a second. The bar of soap that we have, that no longer has a thing on it. So we can assume it melted, right? Yeah, it melted. Yeah, probably. And he, he just did not notice? <laughs> yeah, I know, I the realized- The puddle in his pants, like- Yeah, I know, I'm sitting here like, you, <laughs> you would have a little puddle there, sir. I guess he never noticed, I don't know. Maybe he took the What's bar of soap, but he didn't, like, pocket it. He just left it somewhere in Sholmes' home and just, like, I don't know, picked it up the next day. I don't know. Amazing. It, it would seem we have no choice but to suspend these proceedings for the time being. I trust you have no objection, objection Lord Van Zeex. Oh, my God. <laughs> None, my Lord. 
Scotland Yard will recover the tea, mean the tea from the scene, and carry out the requisite tests immediately. The trial will resume at the same hour tomorrow. The prosecution and defense may conduct further investigation as appropriate in the interim. Uh, yes, my lord. I guess he's too pissed to say anything now. <laughs> well... <sighs> he managed to scrape through there somehow! Thank you, Councils. Court is adjourned until tomorrow. I just realized, is this the first case in the Great Ace Attorney series to actually have multiple days of courts? What do you mean? All oh, the other sure. cases that we've done so far, they we did an investigation and went to court, and we never adjourned courts. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of the cases in the first game did have a second day. Okay. I, I think the it. last case did. I might be misremembering, but I feel like it was the last case, because I remember Iris was there for the first half, and then Susato was there, f I, no, something like that. I feel yep. like there was another one. Oh, what time? I feel like it. 22nd February, 1.11pm, yep. Naruto's Legal Consultancy. And you know what? We're gonna stop here for a minute. Also, uh, final, your mic is still hot, just letting you know. <laughs> well, it doesn't Where matter. Is, how do you live like this? You have no bed or anything. Zasato, you live here too! <laughs> Wait, is this before they get furnishing? Yeah, remember this I, is, this I live in that little room right beyond here. I have a bed in there. You just can't see it. This is, it's a flat, oh my god, I hit my freaking... Anyway, uh, it's a flashback, remember? This is like right after Soseki's last case. So like, Dang, we're, we're back you in guys time. live like this? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna stop here for now and continue on in the next video. We will see you all then, and I'm gonna do my little investigation, because I could have sworn there was at least one other case that had two nights, or two days, but we'll see. <laughs>